Close it, Dick. Yeah. Okay, you can see in the show you. Show you? Yeah, oh, wow. He is so fantastic. Oh. So, look at this. This year's visit to uh, Nepal and Sagarmata National Park had a slightly different focus uh, compared to the other visits I've done during the past 10 years. I wanted to look into new opportunities and uh, related to my interest in both climbing and paragliding. But besides that, I also wanted to add the environmental aspect to my visit. I wanted to find out how the region, how the habitat is impacted by our climate change. And it's, it's a big question, of course. So view this little video as a very small comp contribution to create a bit of awareness. And I think we all can do something. And you'll try to, you can figure out that throughout the movie, what actually you can do. What, there's something about this place. Yeah, this place is lots of chess in just three years. Be before it's here is the range, like a range here. Now it's all the flat millet. And also there's the rugged part up here. And there's also part all the snow all milk ah. so now it's totally chased only the one year yeah. two years and do you have a friend he's actually working in the pyramid down here what's his name his name is Kaji Bista yeah and he's actually we can see his his pyramid from here yeah we can see yeah it. yeah down and glacier and He's yeah. trying to get money <laughs> to actually run this research center to find pollution. Yes. I think he should, he deserves the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to meet you, sir. I'm very glad I've come here to see the research center. Come here, Kaji, into the center. This is the control room yes, where sir. you control this. Uh, can you explain to me, why was this center established? Sir, this is the Italian and Nepal government of the joint project. And uh, they started to build this pyramid from 1987 and then they completed in the 1990. So after that, here we are working about mainly the uh, five things. Mm -hmm. Like uh, number one, climate observatory. Mm -hmm. In the 2006, we installed in the Nepal climate observatory station on the top. So from that, we are monitoring the pollution. Oh, okay. Like uh, black carbon, ozone, mercury, CO2, in other small particle dust like PM1, 2.5, high volume, yeah. and different uh, kinds of the pollution also. So you can actually measure how pollution across the world really impacts the Himalayas here. Yes. And um, so what, what do you see uh, from the measurement results that you have currently? Sir, because of the pollution problem, our mountain is going to melt very fast. So our mountain is the reserve water tank for the million people. Mm -hmm. So that is our heart and that is also our life. But a big country, mm -hmm. they are making the more pollution. Mm -hmm. Pollution is coming here and then affected in our mountain. From our mountain, all the river is going down. Mm -hmm. So we are depending in our river because we are using for the electricity for irrigation mm. for the drinking water also mm. so so there's two sides of this 
actually we have melting water coming down, which from one standpoint is good for agriculture, yes, but it's bad yeah, for the mountains because finally we will not get any water down. In yes, the sir, yes, yes, yes. But uh, every year it is going to melt very fast. Mm. And then top of the mountain of the uh, old ice, it means million years. Mm. From that it was there, the ice. But now all the ice is going to melt and then mm. now we can see the one little black stone. Mm. So really when you say black stone, it's uh, carbon coming into the snow and the ice snow, yes. and that exposes the ice to yes. more energy from the sun and then yes. it melts more. And then melt more. Exactly. So. Okay. Exactly. Yes. And so there are many things you measure also. You may also measure say small logic uh, yes, activity here? Yes. From here uh, we are monitoring the seismology station we have here uh -huh. and also we are monitoring the seismic activity. Mm. Because here we have the two tectonic plates, like uh, one Tibetan side and another is the Indian side. Yes. It is too long. And the uh, Indian side of the tectonic plate is movable. Mm. And then Tibetan side of the tectonic plate is the strong. Mm. And then always pushing to the another tectonic plate yeah. like this. Sometimes our mountain is going to rise. And then Sometimes our land is also moving, yeah. uh, not is side four centimeter per year mo moving. So we are also monitoring this. So thing. actually, is are, are the Him Himalayas getting yes. higher, higher currently? But at the same time, it's dangerous yes. for new earthquakes. Uh, yes, yes. But this is what you can measure here in yes. terms of activity, then, exactly, sir. which is important for Nepal, <laughs> yes. not the least. Yes, sir. Yes. Exactly. With the earthquake in the recent that it happened, yes, uh, yes, yes. So we are regarding all the data here. So, are, are, how do you view the risks of uh, earthquakes uh, coming? Sir, uh, in the 2015, it was the many, many damage our house in the mm. Nepal. But after that, more than 300 shocks continuously coming. Mm. And then, uh, just two months before, also here uh, in the Kotan district, it was the small shocks like the mm. regular scale like this. Sometimes it's coming, mm. but our scientists also they are giving uh, the signal. One day, big problem in the Nepal again. Mm. So they are uh, giving to us the awareness. Here we have the seismic yeah. yeah. So really, what you do in this center here? is very important in terms of both for security of the population here yes, and uh, also as well as uh, environmental questions for pollution. Yes, More than 500 scientists uh, connected with this project. Yeah. Yes, related to this project. Mm -hmm. If somebody they want to research in this area, mm -hmm. they can join in our head office, they can come here. Mm -hmm. From here we can provide the like lodging, fooding, technical yeah. support, documentation, everything we can provide to them because this is also Nepal government mm -hmm. of the property, so we can have fun. Do you, do you, are, uh, are you open to inviting more people to yes, support sir, yes. this? If somebody they want to welcome here, mm. because from uh, 2015 we have little bit of economic crisis in mm. Italy, and then after that the COVID problem also. Yes, yeah. And then for the f we have now problem about the financial. Now I'm alone working here from mm. six seven years. I have my uh, engineer and then I head of his people also in the mm. yeah. But they are sometimes is coming. Mm. We are working continuously, but without money we have difficult to uh, maintenance management. Mm. Uh, so I my my first goal was actually carrying through a climb to a mountain called Lubuche and it's way up almost very near to Everest Base Camp. And I could see lots of interesting things there. I interviewed Sherpas, uh, both guides, as well as people that uh, are uh, operating environmental research stations up there. And it was, the findings I had was pretty interesting, but not surprising. Uh, it's, uh, this is my last day here in Kathmandu and I'm returning to a European continent that is in war which means that uh, it's impacting the environment in, in a 
very bad way currently. We also know that the financial crisis in the world has an impact also on focus on climate change questions. And this is very sad, uh, in, uh, as a matter of fact, because uh, when I actually see what I've seen in the Himalayas during my years, I see a very clear development that the Himalayas, uh, they are melting uh, and things are happening with the climate. You can hear that expeditions can't be run in the same way as before. So things are changing rapidly and not to uh, forget the least that we're, this is not about climbers. This is about the people that are dependent on water flows uh, throughout the entire Himalayan region. 1.5 billion people living in this region. So the question is bigger than uh, actually uh, climbing. Um, I read a uh, report uh, through uh, German Watch uh, about uh, climate change, cli global uh, climate risk index. Um, there you can see that the poorest countries in the world are actually those that are impacted the most by climate change currently. And Nepal is only one of these countries uh, squeezed in between very big countries that actually cause pollution in it to a large extent. Um, so this little country has very much to lose on climate change. At the same time, they're so occupied by just surviving families like Sharapas up in the mountain, surviving to get money for food and uh, also build up their homes after the uh, earthquake that was a couple of years ago. So. I think it's time to get attention to this question. That's why I decided to create this little movie, to contribute with some type of awareness. So what, you, what can you do? You can actually uh, support uh, with donations. Dava Yangs and Sherpa, very welcome to this little short interview. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and we are in the Yakni Yati Hotel here in Kathmandu. Uh, but this is not the common place where you spend your time always. <laughs> yeah. You are more, more up in the mountains. Yeah, but I come around here because you see the plants here. Yeah. The, 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 the here, yeah, it's kind of a hub to, uh, for guiding. guiding. Yeah. And, and you're a well-known person here in Nepal, and, but also in the world, because uh, first of all, you are, you are a high-altitude climber and a guide with a UIA gym uh, certificate, yeah, which is unusual. Uh, and you're also sponsored by uh, North Face and Rolex, uh, which are obviously you have much more expensive watch than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So. Uh, uh, and uh, you, you, your daily work is actually climbing, taking care of people in the mountains. Uh, and you have, you have climbed several mountains like Everest, K2, and uh, other mountains also. Yeah. 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 I've been, uh, yeah, I climbed uh, Everest, guided three times, uh, summited one time, and uh, K2 and Broad Peak in Pakistan. Yes. And, um, Lodzi, Anapunawan, Daulabu, and Manasu. Manasu. So I ate out of 14. Yes. And I've been guiding in the US, in the Denali, North Cascades, Argentina, and uh, trip to Russia, Elbrus. Oh, Elbrus. Now mainly I guide here in Nepal. Yeah. For, uh, October, spring, and other time I go back to the US and work there. And so it's been. Nepal. Yeah, so you live in the U.S. partly or? Uh, summertime. Summertime, like, yeah. Summertime I guide there and fall like, as, as soon as the season starts here in Nepal, I come here and guide spring and mostly autumn and spring here. And winter I also spring sometimes here because uh, I do a lot of a lot of training courses for the girls and I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 
So it sounds like you and I, <clears throat> we have met on the mountains, but in totally different roles. I have a guide when I go to the mountains, but you are the guide. <laughs> Um, but we have been to similar mountains. Like I haven't been to Cape Town, but I'm looking for maybe you as a guide one day. Oh. You never know. But, yeah. So, and, and recently I was up in uh, the Sagamata National Park and I climbed the Butcher. And I understood you also had a climb with women. Uh, how was that? Yeah, I started. Uh, it was a new thing. I started been training girls for become a guide or like getting into the climbing and then I thought about this idea like maybe you know, we just do like all women and then hire them and this, uh, so they can use their skills and they also can make some money and it's good support for them as a, economically. Mm. So they love to climb and also they can get some money so I hired I plan to do an all woman trip and if the porter was a woman and we have three reacts but the, we hired the three reacts from the woman mm -hmm. to the driver the, was a, a yak driver was a woman and then we have one woman to assistant like yes. assistant guide and another I have what one one woman who can help me in the climbing so yeah. and then climb. So it was a very fun trip for us. Also, at the same time, it's very, very supporting for them and uh, for financial and also, and also the other thing they get to get outside and get some, like, they, they, during those trips, they learn a lot of things. So it's nice to way to, like, uh, help and support and also have fun. So I tried out this one and I really liked it and mm. I like to do it more often. Yeah. So we can see so more can, of these You teams. can travel, the, you can climb peaks, and you can mm. support the, somebody like a woman and mm. single moms, and you know, mm. it's nice. Mm. And they are also, it is a lot of women together, all the workers, they are all, it was also very fun. And a lot of people, things sharing and like, it just, uh, yeah, it's very open and up. Yeah. What do you think about mixed teams with... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're also good. We yeah. have we have two men still. Yeah. But they they, they liked it. <laughs> it was, okay. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have to be only women, so it's mixed yeah. family. Yeah. And uh, when I was at the Butcher, where we both have been now, mm -hmm. when you look down from the Butcher to the valley towards the Kumbu Glacier, you see the pyramid. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, project that uh, is called EBK2CNR.org mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as a website. Yeah. And it's financed by the Nepalese government and also the Italian yeah. government. Mostly Italian. Mostly Italian, that's true. Yeah. So, this, uh, I, I, I met this. Uh, uh, so to say, facility at the first time in my life when I was up in uh, the, the Butch area. And I met Mr. Uh, Mr. Kaji Bista, which I think you know, he's the manager of the pyramid. Uh, and I interviewed him, and it's part of this movie also. Uh, and he mentioned the problems they had with uh, getting finance to run this operation. But he also told about what the pyramid actually does, is measuring pollution and so on. And he was very concerned. So, how do you see things change uh, in terms of uh, the snow, the rain, the weather, temperature, uh, as a consequence of climate change? As a climber and climate, you can me about mountains, I think, uh, mountains are our home yes. and, uh, for the climber. And it depends uh, because the uh, mountain. A lot of people have depend on mountains, not on climber or like guy, also like mm. lower people as a watch. People mountain. living in the mountains, in the mountains, yeah. Or like a little low level resources. Yeah. For water resource. So I have seen like weather base, uh, like uh, this year was not a pretty, it was not a really quite uh, accurate weather. It was snowing, in the wind was snowing. It was still raining in October. Yeah, which was unusual. Unusual. Yeah. There was, even in late September, there was mm. a lot of power on the mountains, like under way and yeah. raining. So there was three changes, and also up in high mountains, and we gained less snow. But this year we have a lot of snow, but usually it always dry. Yeah. And, uh, 
I was in Pakistan this year and it was really heat. Like it was really heating and melting. Huh. And the mountain was like melting so fast in the summer and yeah. that was that makes you really dangerous on rock walls and yeah. hard in climbing and if the snow is much safer. Yeah. It doesn't fall the rock and because the melt the glacier melts so fast and so we have like big rivers unflooded and the, like all this some villages are gone and also some of the bridges are broken because it's been so melting so fast the glacier. Yeah. Pakistan so the infrastructure is here so also that looks like the happening in the if you can say, if you look at the incident of Pakistan, you can say it's not the mountain people are affecting. <coughs> that is uh, a lot of people other than mountain. Of course, mountain is also we have to consider mountain because we live in mountain. Yeah. I think, uh, and yeah, so I like if you go to, if you go from Denali, Argentina, you have uh, they have a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, garbage control, you know, yeah, they have yeah. human waste control and mm, uh, mm. trash control, and they have minimized the people. Yeah, yeah. It's just the uh, Nepal doesn't have uh, those kind of things like uh, waste management and yeah. limits the people. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> See a uh, program and so on, but you think more is needed? Uh, uh, I think more is needed, and I think you need, we need to like minimize the uh, lot of activity on the base camp, like putting a really bigger big tent and yeah. you know, like dragging a lot, a lot of people, I think minimizing groups, yeah. uh, like or minimizing the necessary, you, know, you don't have to put a lot of tents there and you know, you, you, yeah. you're, like dragging the glacier, you know, we need to be flat so because of that, I think it melts for faster. Yeah. yeah. And, like Sagarmata control, they control the guard, like waste management. Yeah, yeah. But they also need to manage at camp yeah. and like uh, oh, yeah. waste. Yeah. And, uh, all those things. Yeah. and also this year, the, this year <coughs> in Dalagi and other west part, uh, they, the local people went to get the mules. Mules with the, go get the base camp with the mules to get mm. the expedition load. So they know they've been working that valley so much that they know when to wear it snow mm. that it doesn't snow. Mm. So suddenly they, it snowed so badly for three days, four days, and they got stuck and all their mules are dead, you know, like 40 oh, or 50 sure. mules dead. So that's because like the locals say, oh, it's, 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 it doesn't look snow this time. You know, mm. it's, we know this out of that. Then it's, Sudden snow and it's this stuff. So mm. it's, less, it's, it's like this. It's unsudden weather. Ah. I think. So, so the animals cannot, the change of climate it has an impact on the animals, really. Yeah. very inspiring hearing about yeah. you and uh, the way you live your life yeah. and uh, I, I hope maybe to be uh, guided by you one day uh, yeah. you never know well, yeah thank yeah. you I have, we, I have we dreamed. welcome you thank you Dal. thank you so much it's nice to meet you nice <laughs> meeting you <laughs> so let's summarize this video Himalaya is really becoming impacted by the environmental uh, change global change and uh, it's, you can see that in many different uh, ways. What I saw when I climbed the Butcher was actually glaciers that uh, decrease in size. I could see it by looking at lakes near to high camp and base camp. Lakes that earlier were much uh, uh, higher and they have decreased in size and in some in cases they have almost vanished. The flows in the rivers uh, are decreasing from various parts of Sagarmata uh, National Park, which is also a sign that there's less and less glacier ice. So things are going to change uh, and it's going to impact the entire region. And in the end, the end is going to impact also the world. So what's happening in the Himalayas is a concern for the entire world. And I think we all have to 
figure out what we can actually do to help these people here. Personally, I tried to help to create awareness and that was my promise to the research group at the pyramid up at Lubutsu. I'm going to spread out the needs that you have and create awareness. And also I help them personally with the donation. You can also do that. Thank you for listening and uh, viewing this video.